All right, today I'm going to show you how to uh, how to make your own plant list using iNaturalist. iNaturalist is, is incredibly valuable. It's a great educational tool. Some people uh, have a misconception of it as a social media app, uh, but I don't use it like that. I just use it strictly for myself. And if if people you know observe what I'm doing on it, then so be it but uh i don't really use it for that it's it's mostly just to keep track of all the plants that i see and where i see them and it's also a great search tool i mean you can create checklists you can uh you can you know if you forget what species you saw but you remember what family it's in which hopefully you do anytime you meet a new plant you should always ask yourself what family is it in the more you do that the more you're going to notice similarities between all the members of a family or a genus or in order, et cetera. So really pay attention to that taxonomy on it. Um, and you can also, uh, using this uh, search function right here by location, you can type in county, uh, province of a country, uh, country, et cetera, uh, state, whatever. And so you can you can type in, for instance, Asteraceae, it's a sunflower family, and type in Utah, and, it, you know, and you'll get a list of everything you've ever seen in Utah or Maine or like in Texas, wherever. So it's a it's an incredibly useful tool, and that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna I'm going to create a checklist for all the plants I've ever observed in Chile, in the country of Chile, and then I'm going to show you how to export that data to a spreadsheet and and basically sort it, you know, by family and then by genus in the family and create your own uh, checklist. Incredibly useful, and it's useful for me too because I'll frequently forget uh, genus names. Uh, of plants that I'm familiar with and that I've seen before. I've just got so much information in my fucking head that uh, it can be really hard to keep track of. And so if I can create like a PDF file or a doc file that I could just pull up on my phone and then, you know, remember what was that plant and that family that I saw, you know, in Texas or wherever that I can't remember and boom, pull it up and get a reminder of that, um, that genus name or that species whatever. So it's incredibly useful. And then you can also go on and create your own annotated checklist, you know, with your own descriptions of plants or photos or whatever. So this is an incredibly useful tool. Let's get to work. Here we go. So we're going to go to iNaturalist uh, for Chile. Go to your go to your observations. And I'm going to type in planty and location Chile. Let it get suggested for you there. And I'll get a list of everything that I've seen in Chile. And then you go up here to filters and you select download. And then this will bring you to uh, another page. And you've got all these different fields that you can select. Uh, normally, I just go right down here and I select uh, choose columns, none. Um, I just, I deselect everything. And... Uh, and then let's see, taxon, I'll select none. I just want the scientific name. I don't need the GPS or any of that. You can also do that too. You can, there's so many different fields you can get. And what this is going to do, it's going to generate a CSV file. So I'll select scientific name and then taxon family name. And that's it. And then I'll create export. So it takes a minute here. Uh, not too long. You know, I just did one for the entire state of Texas, all 2000 plants I've ever observed. Uh, in Texas, and it took like three minutes, so this shouldn't be too long. So we'll just sit here and wait. And this is kind of an involved process. I use Google Sheets. You can use Excel uh, if you've got that. So now you're going to come down here, download this. It downloads it as, as a zip file, and then you've got to extract it, which uh, I will do here let's see extract extract all and i'll save it to my computer click on it rename it chile plant list crime pays then i'm going to go up here to sheets so i'll have to we're going to share a different uh yeah, we're going to go to Sheets. I use Google Sheets because it's open source. I kind of hate Microsoft. Google Sheets. There we go. Sign in. 
And uh, and then we'll do blank sheet. Now I'll share. I got to share this page because this recording up there we go. Let's see. Is this Sharon? No. Yeah, we got right here. Okay. So we'll deselect this. And we're sharing just uh, just the Google Sheets page. So now we go to open. Upload. Browse all this bullshit. You know, go in there. And uh, Chile plant list crime pays. Now it's going to open that up. All right. Okay. So now we got all this data. You can see it's generally a clusterfuck. We've got this in Google uh, Sheets. You can see we got column A, the scientific name consisting of genus and species. Column B, we got the family. So the first thing we're going to do is select both these fields. Look, I could be a fucking accountant now. I'm learning Google. I'm learning how to work with spreadsheets. Then we go to data. We go to sort sheet. Oh, fucking, come on, you pain in the ass. Okay, wait, let's let's go to column A, column B, data, sort range. There we go. Sort range by column A, according to column A, A to Z. So, well, first we'll get this, this sorted out. So we got the Akina, which is a member of Rosisi. You can see I've got seven Akina species. I never identified down to uh, species or seven Akina observations. So this is just by genus, but you could see the families are a clusterfuck. And that's not how we normally uh, arrange checklists, botanical checklists. You want to arrange it by family so that you can, uh, you know, because everybody normally remembers family. That's how we identify plants. That's what uh, flowers uh, are identified by, reproductive structures, you know, whether it's conifers or uh, uh, or ferns or whatever the shit. So we, we arrange by family. Um, and that's, uh, that's how checklists are arranged. So we've got to sort these by family now. So we'll, then we'll go to, we've, remember, we went to data already. We selected sort range by column A, A to Z. Now we go to advanced range sorting options. And we uh, sort by column B. And there you go. So now you've got uh, genus. You've got the families all grouped together. And then you've got the genus and species. The species is in alphabetical order too. Now is the... Uh, kind of a frustrating part you got to type in some code so we're going to type in I, mean, I don't want this what is this what is this stuff now we'll type in column c just have it selected you go up here to fx to this little part and you let me make sure this thing is still recording or i'm gonna start freaking out and throwing shit okay there we go it's still recording great so now you type in uh I got this already selected. The A1 equals A1 and signed uh, uh, quotes, space, quotes, and sign, and then column B1. And then you hit return. It'll say autofill, suggested autofill, select yes. And so now we've got, what, what we're doing now is just basically merging the fields. You want the scientific name, the genus and species, the full botanical name, and the family in the same column and so that's what that's what we are going to do so all this is sorted now we can click column uh c click the whole column hit copy and then over here come to column a and hit paste special right click paste special and then values only and now we've just basically moved column c to column a and then you can just go ahead and delete column B and delete column C, the whole thing. I want to get rid of this. Why is it not letting me do There we go. And so now you can just click column A and then hit copy. And then you've got the, I've got the whole, oh wait, we I forgot one step. You click column A and then you go to data and then you go to data cleanup and remove duplicates because some species I have three observations of, so it'll just, it'll be duplicates. We don't need that. Like, look, Lithrea caustica down here, right? I observed that three times. We don't need to see it three times. We just need it once. We just need it to know it's there. Remove duplicates, remove duplicates, and boom. So now I've got a, a, a complete list of every plant that I've observed on iNaturalist. 
uh, in Chile according to family. It's organized by family, and then within that, it's organized by genus and species. And so now we can cl we click on it, hit copy, and now we can export this to a Google Docs file and then break it up into two columns and boom, you got your own checklist. And you can do this. This is great. If you're doing like a survey, you know, you got, say, uh, some landowners like in Texas, right? They want a survey of what grows on their land, right? You, you can click a poly. Everything you've observed on iNaturalist, everything that has been observed on iNaturalist, you click a polygon. Um, I just normally stick with my own because there's misidentifications out there. And at least my own, if I've misidentified something, I can check it later. But you can click a polygon on that map on iNaturalist and then create that same uh that's you know you could choose what fields go into there and then you get a, a a list of everything observed in that polygon or in that county or in that state or or in that family you could do create a family checklist a plant family checklist anyway and you just hit that download button in the lower right hand corner of uh the filters menu on iNaturalist and then you get uh that csv file exported to google sheets and uh and then just organize it accordingly all right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to export that data from the spreadsheet to Google Docs. And that's what we got right here. So go ahead and I'll hit uh, let the control shift V so it doesn't import it in a column. It just imports uh, it just imports straight up text. And I like the font. I'll hit C control A. I'll switch it to Georgia because I like that font. It's a pretty font. And then we'll go to uh, Format, hit Columns 2, because uh, that uh, saves a bunch of space. And then now, uh, it's just a matter. You've got everything arranged by family. They're arranged by genus and species, um, but also by family. So this is, a. Uh, if you want, you can go in there and just go through. I like to put spaces to make it easier to find, you know, by family. So, uh Acanthaceae, that's where the family ends. Fall of Amnes it's in its own right there. Isoaceae, and then I'll just separate it, put in spaces like that. And uh, this, and then I'll have this on hand. And um, it makes it incredibly easy, you know, especially if you forget names. I've got so many plant names in my head. Now I need something like this to reference everything. And free, you know, I'll, I'll remember what genus something was in, but I'll forget the species name or I'll remember what family something was in, but what genus uh, uh, it was. And so then I can just easily remember it like this Choristi, like that's a fam, that's a genus I don't see that much. I know what it is. I've encountered it before. I know it's Acanthaceae, but I'll forget the exact genus name. So I, but I'll remember it's Acanthaceae. So all I got to do is pull this out, look up Acanthaceae, which is alphabetically, the families are arranged alphabetically. And then I can just see this Choristi right there. So, uh, Obviously, and then you could save this as a PDF, whatever. And then if you decide to, like, I want to create an annotated profanity laden checklist, uh, you know, of notes about some of my favorite species, et cetera, that kind of shit. Um, I can go ahead and do that. You know, you can uh, basically just get this document and then um, you can, you know, make the species name and the family in bold and then type in a little bit larger font and then type in something, you know, descriptive. Uh, characteristics that make it easy to remember where it occurs, what type of habitat it occurs in, etc. So incredibly useful tool. Another reason to use iNaturalist. I, I never understand why some people use or some people shit on iNaturalist just because there's a you know a handful of nerds that don't go outside and you know just sit there identifying stuff all day and then arguing with each other about it does not mean you know that those that does not mean that the whole the whole format should be indicted it's such a it's such a useful tool for learning all right and and yes there are those people that just hang out online all the time but you know what they're going to be you're going to find those anywhere so i just uh if you don't know what i'm talking about then consider yourself lucky this is the thing i encounter a lot i, I have friends who you know arrogantly love to talk about how they don't use iNaturalist for whatever stupid reason it's okay suit yourself man this is an incredibly useful tool and uh you know especially for doing things like creating species lists for a certain area or you know like i said surveys etc it's a great way to share information and just keep track of what what you've seen so anyway that's all i got now for real i really mean it have a good rest of your day go fuck yourself bye